Ratios play a pivotal role in navigating the complexity of your financial statements, especially when it comes to accounts payable. In today's session, we're honing in on five financial ratios that are not just important, they're indispensable. These metrics will arm you with the insights you need to optimize cash flow, maintain liquidity, and safeguard the financial health of your organization. But that's not all. Make sure you stick around until the end where we'll reveal the one critical ratio that's often overlooked in financial discussions. This oversight can come at a steep cost. But today, you'll learn how to avoid that pitfall and keep your company on solid financial ground. It will probably come as no surprise to you to see that we are starting out with Days Payable Outstanding, or DPO. DPO measures the average number of days your company takes to pay its suppliers. A higher DPO indicates that the company is taking longer to pay its bills, which might be beneficial for cash flow, but could strain supplier relationship. In an ideal situation, which almost never exists, your DPO would be equal or lower than your DSO, or your day's sales outstanding, which is a measure of how long your organization takes to collect its receivable. In reality, DPO is almost always shorter than DSO. When considering extending your payment terms, it is important that you remember many investors, bankers, and other lenders will look at the DPO figure when making their investment or lending decision. Um, to, to calculate DP, DPO, let's look at the formula. It's really quite simple. You take your accounts payable balance, divide it by cost of goods sold, and then multiply it by 365. Okay, so let's now look at a real numerical example, if you will, and imagine your company has a cost of goods sold of four and a half million dollars, and at the end of the year, your accounts payable balance is five hundred thousand dollars. So, to do our calculation, we take the five hundred thousand, we divide it by the forty-five uh, hundred, which is short for the four million five hundred. I just dropped, dropped the last three zeros. Multiply it by three hundred and sixty-five, and we come up with forty point five, or forty days. 40 40 and a half days. So on average, this is how long it's take your company to pay its suppliers in the last year. Sometimes um, analysts will analyze, will compare your uh, DPO this year to the prior year to see if you're, you know, getting longer or shorter or whatever. Um, also, just keep in mind this is the actual mathematical calculation, but sometimes you'll see financial folks use 360 instead of 365. Um, they do this in a lot of their financial transactions. So now let's move on and take a look at the accounts payable turnover ratio. This ratio measures basically how quickly your company pays off its suppliers. A higher turnover ratio indicates that your company is paying its suppliers faster and slower just and lower just the opposite. Okay? And to calculate, we simply take your total credit purchases and divide it by your accounts payable balance. Now let's take a look at a real life example with some hard numbers. Um, and going back to our previous example, let's say your company's total purchases for the year were five and a half million dollars and your your accounts payable balance at the end of the year was 500 so we divide the uh, five million five by the five hundred thousand and we come up with an AP turnover ratio of 11 times this is this is a kind of a high number to be honest and this means that your company pays its suppliers 12 times a year which would indicate a really strong cash position um, to put it in perspective most analysts look for turnover to be somewhere between six and ten days uh, six and ten times so this this 11 days is a very healthy uh, indicator. It's it's 11 times, not 11 days. Okay, so we have a, he a heavy indicator, a healthy company. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at the current ratio. Um, this is those one of one of those ratios that analysts use to measure liquidity. It compares your company's current assets to its current uh, liabilities to evaluate its short term finance the short term financial health of your organization. Remember, we're using the word current. Okay. 
It is calculated by dividing current assets by current liability. Um, and remember, when we're talking about financial statements, the term current generally means less than one year. Okay, now let's turn our attention to our real life example, if you will, of a calculation for our current ratio. So in this hypothetical example, we have current assets of a million dollars, current liabilities of $600,000. We divide the million by the 600,000 and we come up with a current ratio of 1.67 okay now um, what this says is your company has a dollar 67 in a current assets for every dollar of current liabilities again a very solid liquid position um, most but definitely not all current uh, robust uh, ratios are not that robust a current ratio of under one means the uh, the organization might have trouble meeting its uh, current financial obligations. Now we say might because you can't look at the current ratio or actually any of the other ratios or calculations that we're going to, we're talking about today in a vacuum. You need to look at the, the entire picture, but if you're just trying to get a real quick, quick down and dirty uh, calculation, this is it. So when we look at the ratios in, as I say, not in a vacuum, um, the other, the next ratio that we're probably going to look at is called the quick ratio. It's closely related to the current ratio. Um, and it's also known as the acid test ratio. What this ratio does is provide a more stringent test of liquidity, and it does this by excluding inventory from current assets, as inventory might not be quickly converted to cash. It just depends upon the business that you're in and the nature of your business. So it might not be re realistic if you're forced to sell in the open market market, um, you may not be able to get the full value very quick, very quickly. Also, it is possible that the value of the inventory really should be written down, um, but the company hopes to use it um, or sell it, depending upon um, your business, before it has to do that. In certain cases, the, in the inventory might be worthless to any entity other than your comp the company it was created for. Examples of this might be uh, customized products, uh, products that have the company logo on it. Simple example, would Coke, or for that matter, any other soda, soda company ever be willing to say so uh, sell its soda in co cans with the Pepsi logo on it? So you can think of it kind of that way. Um, and it is calculated by taking taking your current assets, subtracting the value of your inventory for, from that, and dividing it by uh, current liabilities. Um, so going going back to our previous example and using uh, the same number. So let's, let's uh, go back to the example. And in this case, we're going to say our um, inventory is worth 400,000. Um, our current assets are a million. Our current our current assets without the, the inventory in it are 600,000, then the million less the 400,000, and our current um, liabilities again 600,000, giving us a quick ratio uh, quick, quick ratio of one. Um, and again, the quick ratio of one uh, means that your company will be able to meet its short term. Term, um, obligations without having to worry about the sale of the inventory because we as we discussed the inventory may is often not exactly worth what is being carried on the books okay and we're not even going to get into a discussion of how LIFO and FIFO impacts that okay um, a quick ratio below one would be somewhat concerning but remember you're not going to look at the ratio in a vacuum now before we get to that killer ratio, the one that everyone forgets to calculate, if you're getting any value from this talk, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. That simple act, just hitting that like button, helps us get wider distribution, which allows us to make more pieces like this. So big thank you from me to everyone who has hit that like button. All right, now that killer ratio, or what I think is that killer ratio anyway, and this is referred to as the cash conversion cycle. And what 
that does is it takes, um, it measures the time it would take your company to convert its resources um, and inputs into cash flow. And it's calculated like this. They take the day's inventory outstanding, D-I-O, and the day's sales outstanding, D-S-O, add them together, and from that you subtract the DPO, the day's payable outstanding. And our real life example, in our real life example, um, I said day's inventory outstanding, 46 days, DSO, 35 days, add the two together, you get 81, and we subtract from it our DPO of 40 days, and we come up with a, a cash conversion cycle of 41 days. So what this means is your company's cash is tied up for 41 days on average in the production and sales process before you can convert it to, to cash. What is normal will vary widely depending on industry. When collecting the data for this talk, I found little agreement as to what it was would be normal when it comes to the cash conver conversion cycle. You'll find that most organizations have a cash conversion cycle somewhere between 30 and 80, but that is a pretty wide range. To see what's acceptable for your organization, you probably want to compare your activity to those in similar industries, i.e. your competitors. Understanding these five critical financial ratios, DPO, accounts payable turnover, current ratio, quick ratio, and cash conversion cycle gives you insights needed to effectively manage an accounts payable. By keeping these metrics in check, you can optimize your company's financial performance, improve liquidity, and hopefully ensure sustained growth. But that's just one piece of the analytical puzzle. I believe that data analytic function is rapidly growing in importance when it comes to the accounts payable process, function, and metric. That's why we did a talk on this very topic to help you improve your skills in this area. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.